I am Santu. This is a tutorial on how to get started on Qt for device creation. I'll show you how to create your first application and how to deploy it into your target hardware. In this demo we'll be using Raspberry Pi because it's very cheap and very easy to get. We'll be putting together your Raspberry. We'll be setting up the Qt creator in your PC. And then uh, we'll configure the Qt creator and then finally we'll deploy the application, a sample application into your hardware. You'll need a Raspberry. I'll be using Raspberry Pi 3B. You need a 7-inch Raspberry multi-touch. You need a case. You will need a micro USB 2-ampere um, power supply to run your Raspberry. And you will need a micro SD memory card uh, that should be Type 11, minimum 16 gigabytes. And you need an Ethernet router to create a network between uh, your computer and your Raspberry. So you can go to Qt.io and download the latest Qt tools. Here I'm using the 5.9 Beta 3 uh, as a sample. Uh, you can install it with the defaults, uh, but additionally you need to remember under Embedded you need to remember to select the emulator and the Raspberry Pi as a target and then set up the Embedded tools to install. As you can see also here that Qt runs on pretty much any software and hardware. So we support multiple different hardware vendors and several different operating systems. And you can, if you are not using Raspberry, you can use any other of these for this demo. Additional to installing the Qt Creator and Qt Tools, you need to also install the Oracle VirtualBox in your machine. You can look up for the instructions under Qt.io. So once you have the Qt Creator installed, you need to flash the memory card for your Raspberry. There is a tool for that in the Qt Creator. So before you go anywhere, you can go under the menu of Tools, flash Qt to Qt device, then answer yes to any of security warnings. Uh, click Next, Boot to Qt for Raspberry, and that's what you want to do. Uh, and click Next select the drive where you have your uh, flash memory card. Click Next and uh, you will start the writing. Here we go. This will take a few minutes, so we'll fast forward this for you. And now you are finished, so we can continue. And basically you are ready to take your memory card and plug it into your device. Then we are ready to set up our Raspbian. So you take the memory card, you insert it into your Raspbian. So this is the right order of the cables. I had difficulties finding the right order of the cables for the touchscreen and Raspberry B3. Uh, I have the, the colors of the cables, it doesn't really matter uh, as long as you connect the right pins to right uh, uh, with each other. And for the rest of it, we'll fast forward the assembly of the Raspbian. Um, you can actually find pretty good instructions on the internet, so no point of instructing how to set up Raspbian on this video. Okay, now we can actually start uh, the Raspberry. So uh, when you put in the power, you put it into the Raspberry itself. And uh, you should get the lights on on the Raspberry. And you should get the screen on, uh, thing coming up on the Raspberry, so it's booting to the boot to Qt. What you then need to do is set up the TCP IP connectivity between your Raspberry and your laptop. You can use the same Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi works just fine as long as there is a TCP IP routing between uh, within the same, same hotspot. Uh, but if you're going to go into a demo environment, uh, a fair or an event where there's uh, a lot of congestion on the Wi-Fi network, you may have problems with the connectivity. Cable is a foolproof way of connecting the, these two devices. We don't support the USB uh, bridge uh, on, on Raspberry, and it's so specific for Raspberry where the USB debugging is not available. So in the Raspberry, you can go into the settings and into the network and look at the, look at the connection. So from here you can set the Wi-Fi connection if you want, uh, but we recommend using the cable connection. And note that you will need this uh, TCP IP address later on. So here we have 10.9.70.83 and we need to remember and configure that on the Qt Creator later on. In the Qt Creator uh, you can go to the tools and options to add a new hardware under which uh, you can click uh, the devices down here. You say add and you want to select the boot to Qt device and then you start the wizard. You can add a device name, add something that you will re recognize it 
uh, uh, with, uh, then you need to put the device address. And this is the TCP IP address we just looked from the device. So that in this case it's 10.9.70.83. And it's a hardware and then you just say finish and now you have your uh, device set up. Then uh, you may want to check under build and run that uh, your kit is set up as, as it should be. Uh, your auto detected here should appear the device you did uh, and as we can see it here it is. So. Uh, now that we've set up the hardware into the Qt Creator, uh, we need a project that we can play with. Um, so we can say here, uh, file and a new project. Uh, what we want to use is one of the sample applications. So we use the Qt Quick Controls 2 application. Uh, we say choose. Uh, then we need to give the project a name. Uh, let's give a demo for this, this hardware. You cannot have spaces on the names. Click next, click uh, next again, make sure you have the right hardware target selected here. So what we want to select is the boot to -cute emulator, boot to -cute Raspberry, and then we want to have the desktop environment so we can play with it. Click next and finish and you're done with your project. So now we have everything set up. We have the, the Raspberry set up, it's running. We have the connectivity set up between the two devices. What you may want to do is just ping the device to make sure that you have the connectivity. Uh, and we have the project set up on the Qt Creator. So first uh, we will try to run the Qt Creator, the application in the, in the desktop environment. We have set it into the release and we can run it. Compass the application and we can see it uh, here on the screen. So this is what the very simple basic uh, default template application looks like. It runs just fine, so let's close it. Uh, then select the Raspberry as a release target. This will configure your creator for that. And once this run button turns green, we can then you know run it. And now it will compile it, create the debugging bridge between your creator and then launch the application in the Raspberry, as you can see. So we have the same application here. This is how dead easy deploying new applications into your new hardware is. Okay, congratulations. Now you have your first application deployed in your target hardware. Uh, we appreciate your feedback in the comments section, so please give us feedback. Um, testing in your target hardware as early as possible in your project is really important because it allows you to find um, the possible hardware bottlenecks and perks you may have uh, in your project. You can verify on the real screen uh, the, the resolution, the object sizes, that the buttons are not too small or too big. You can verify the contrast and the brightness of the screen. And you can also verify that whatever was a great design in your UI design tool actually works with your hardware and your input devices.